Good afternoon to this late edition of the KSAT 12 News at Noon. I hope you've been enjoying the uh, parades, the Battle of Flowers parade, but we do have news to report today and weather. So we'll start with arson investigators trying to figure out how a fire found its way onto property where no one was supposed to be living. It burned down a backyard shed overnight and caused heavy damage to a vacant home. As Katrina Weber reports, the fire also has left a neighbor with a lot of repairs to make. With sizzling sounds and fierce flames, fire barged into this Northside neighborhood just before midnight. The flames erupted first in a backyard shed in the 200 block of Green Meadow, then moved quickly to the vacant house in front of it. At least one person in this neighborhood near Jackson Keller and Blanco Road noticed and called 911, bringing a brigade of firefighters to the rescue. There was a big fire. Did you miss it? This morning, it was all neighbors could talk about. De Luvina Hernandez may have had more to say than anyone, though. As the trouble headed toward her home, she got a warning from her barking dogs. Because there were people out front and the peep and the flames out back. It was a huge, I never saw a flame like that. She led us into her backyard to take pictures of the damage done. The flames ate through her fence and the heat melted the siding on her house. Well, the, I'll call the 911 while I was outside in my porch uh, looking at that big flame. While no one officially was living here, firefighters say both the shed and the house, as you can see, were jam packed with items that only added fuel to the fire. Neighbors say the owner of the home died several years ago but they suspect someone may have been staying on the property without permission. The question now for investigators is whether that someone also had a hand in this fire. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a man left for dead on a San Antonio highway overnight. Now police want to find the driver who hit him. Police tell us it happened when the victim was crossing I-35 near Brooklyn Avenue just before two in the morning. Officers believe the driver hit him, but then just kept going. The victim pronounced dead at the scene. Police say when they find that driver, the person will face failure to stop and render aid, leading to death. New details this noon, a shooting investigation. San Antonio police say suspects drove up to the victim exchanging words before gunfire broke out. This was in the 3300 block of Roselawn. That's near Kennedy Park on the southwest side. The victim was shot in the shoulder and then ran for help from neighbors. He should be okay. However, police tell us the victim did not cooperate with them. All they know about the suspect is that they were in a gray vehicle and they took off after the shooting. So far, police have not found the suspects. Taking a live look outside with live cam, the Battle of Flowers parade is over. The sun is out and it's getting hot out there, Mia. Yes, temperatures climbing pretty toasty out there, especially when you factor in the added humidity, right? That's moved in for this Friday, a little bit different than the lower humidity values that we saw yesterday. We've got a lot to talk about, though, especially over the next 24 hours, because while it is quiet and sunny out there right now, we've got a good chance for some strong to severe storms to move in later this evening. So let's briefly give you that timeline. You can see that, yes, those temperatures are climbing into the mid to upper 70s this lunchtime hour here in San Antonio. Beautiful sunshine and blue skies. We are going to hold on to that sunshine into this afternoon. Temperatures are going to crank up into the upper 80s, even closing in on that 90 degree mark here in San Antonio. But especially by to just after 5 p.m., that's when we're going to start to see some thunderstorm development across across portions of the hill country as a cold front works its way into south central Texas. For us here in San Antonio, we are expecting a line of strong to yes, even severe thunderstorms possible to move in generally in between about 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Numerous to widespread activity and then we'll see that move farther off to the southeast later tonight. Rain chances are tapering off through the overnight hours and Flambeau is going to be just fine into tomorrow evening. But with the those strong storms. The biggest things we'll need to monitor some large hail as well as yes, some strong damaging wind gusts. You're definitely going to want to stay weather aware before stepping out to Friday night plans and a good idea to go ahead and download that KSAT Weather Authority app. We'll get you a full look at that future cast time it out for you coming up in just a few guys. Thank you so much, Mia. Most city of San Antonio offices are going to be closed today for Fiesta. San it just says, say this for me. San Jacinto Day. I don't know why I can't say that word. And Battle of Flowers, of course. 
Emergency crews, though, are going to be on duty and city parks will be open, but the city hall and most municipal offices will be closed on San Jacinto Day. Jacinto Day. And again, there's no early voting today. Oh, but the fun continues tomorrow. Looking ahead to tomorrow's festivities, we'll be live streaming the Fiesta Pooch Parade beginning at 8 a.m. That's always a fun one. The King William Fair Parade starts at 9. You can watch them both on KSAT.com and KSAT Plus. And if you're heading out to the King William Fair, the gates are going to open at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you buy your tickets today, you can save $5. And then tomorrow tickets are $25 for everyone 12 and older. And of course, Fiesta Flambeau is the night parade happening tomorrow. The famous illuminated night parade is celebrating its 75th Diamond Jubilee this year. More than 750,000 spectators are expected to line the city streets and see the action in person. But then another 1.5 million viewers are expected to watch the Fiesta Flambeau Parade on TV. And we're talking across the country. Our coverage begins at 7 p.m. tomorrow with a pre-party followed by the parade. Steve Spreester and Stephanie Jimenez are going to be hosting the broadcast, which you can watch right here on TV on all of our digital platforms. And even though Fiesta is winding down, there's still a lot going on over the next few days. Scan the QR code to take a look at our Fiesta user guide. You can find it in the Fiesta section of KSAT.com. Hey, a cat is going viral as the internet follows its weight loss journey. How Patches is doing with his new diet. A Texas mom breaking down in tears, recalling the moment that lightning struck her two sons in Fort Worth. How the bolt of lightning hit both kids. The latest battle in the abortion fight could be a law passed 150 years ago. The Comstock Act bans the mailing of contraceptives, lewd materials and drugs. Anti-abortion activists could use it to provide a pathway for effectively banning abortion nationwide, even in states where the procedure is illegal. With this route, they are hoping to end the availability of medication abortion, which makes up a majority of abortions in the U.S. today. It could also have an effect on surgical abortions by restricting the shipment of medical instruments and supplies used in the procedure. The fight over the law's reach is already brewing in court. Federal officials say no new cases of impox have been reported in the U.S. this week. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the seven-day average of a new case reached zero on Tuesday. None. This is for the first time since the peak of the outbreak last year. The World Health Organization declared MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, a public health emergency of international concern. Back in 2022, the CDC reported over 30,000 cases in the U.S. between May of 2022 and April of this year, with 42 deaths linked to the virus. The last two cases were reported to the agency on April 18th. Two young brothers in North Texas recovering after surviving a lightning strike. It hit both of them. According to Cook Children's Medical Center, seven-year-old Isaac Martinez and 13-year-old Jaden Alvarado were playing outside on Wednesday in Fort Worth. Lightning struck the tree above them. The lightning then ricocheted and ended up striking Jaden, and that caused cardiac arrest. Doctors say it then ricocheted off of him onto Isaac. Both boys lost consciousness and collapsed. I thought I had lost my boys, honestly. It was the worst feeling you can ever. Mom, it's okay. I don't wish that on anyone. To literally see your boys, they're laying, they're lifeless, not moving. <gasps> and to now, I'm, I thank God every second that he didn't take my boys. Very emotional. It's so sweet to hear the son in the background saying, Mom, I'm okay. <laughs> Both boys are doing better and they are resting. Their mother says it wasn't raining when that lightning hit. There's a good lesson there. And she was about to go tell them to come inside.
Doctors advising parents to keep their children indoors when there is a severe weather threat like thunder or lightning. But getting struck like this is rare. According to the CDC, there are less than one in a million chances you're going to get struck by lightning in any given year. Outside with Live Can, absolutely beautiful morning this morning. Great temperature for all the folks who are watching the parade downtown, all the folks who were actually in the parade. That was a three mile trek. So, you know, hopefully they made it without a little overheat. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully there was some water included, especially closer to the end. Because, yeah, we had the cloud cover and some fog out there earlier this morning. Held temperatures at bay a little bit. But once the sun came out, yeah, those temps were able to climb into the 70s, which is where we are right now. A quick look at the aquifer level for this Friday. Up three tenths of a foot, 641. In terms of our pollen count, molds, pecan, and oak, but they are all low. So that is the great news. We're going to get you a full look at that storm chance that we're monitoring for this evening, as well as a look at your Fiesta forecast for tomorrow. Coming up in a bit. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Which Fiesta royalty member is also a part of El Rey Feo's Royal Court? Is it A, the Charo Queen, B, La Reina de la Feria de las Flores, or C, Miss San Antonio? The answer, after the break. Which Fiesta royalty member is also part of El Rey Fails Royal Court? The answer is B, La Reina de la Feria de las Flores. Couldn't have been better this morning. I don't, I don't think it could have been any better. I am... Um yeah, well, Whew, that was that was some heat. We're not used to that. We have uh, really kind of escaped all that. We really have this past week or so. It's been an active week of weather, but at least, yeah, we've seen some cooler than average Did temperatures. I, get all the I know out? I had a ton of confetti in my hair, so I was having to brush it out over a trash can to make sure. Fiesta issues. Who would crack Coscarones on y'all to? Who would who had Ooh, the nerve? I don't do know. That? David Maybe Elder. David Elder, Elder my, David my, Sears. Yeah. Sarah Spivey. All of them. But anyway, yes. it was a lot of fun, and Sweet. I'm glad the weather cooperated. It yeah. feels, it almost feels like, uh, you know, God must love Fiesta because it is allowing these events to happen. Who wouldn't love Fiesta? Exactly. So we are expecting strong storms to move in this evening, which, you know, isn't great for any Friday evening Fiesta plans that you may have out and about. But yes, at least we're not seeing those storms move in during a big parade time. Let's get you a look at the weather headlines here, what we're going to be monitoring into the upcoming weekend. So yes, this evening, especially in between about 6 to 9 p.m. here in San Antonio, a strong to severe line of storms is expected to push through the area into tomorrow though we'll see those rain chances move east not expecting any issues rain wise for our Saturday it will be windy though that's the big thing for tomorrow we will be a little bit cooler and we'll also see low humidity move in so that's going to help out as well into Sunday a chilly start because of that drier air that moves in plenty of sunshine high in the 80s an absolute beautiful into the weekend there as well but yeah Yes, let's talk about this storm chance here as we head into this afternoon and evening. You can see we've got a few clouds across portions of the coastal plains, mainly to the south and east of San Antonio. South winds in place pumping in that Gulf moisture, which is why the humidity levels are higher than where we were this time yesterday. As we take a look up to the north, you can see, yes, we do have some rain and storms moving through portions of the Texas Panhandle, but there's an area of low pressure that has a cold front attached to it. That is going to be the system that is expected to spark up this line of strong to severe storms here this evening. Here's the latest look at our future cast depicting what the radar is going to look like throughout the remainder of this Friday. By 3 p.m. we are still mainly quiet, mostly sunny skies, temperatures in the upper 80s. Notice by about 4 to 5 o'clock we are expecting that front to then start to move into our far western counties, especially up into the hill country and then closer to the Rio Grande. Some isolated storms start to develop. Then that that fills in along that boundary, pushing through Bear County and San Antonio in between about 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then that will continue to work its way farther off to the south by 10 to 11 p.m. Some lingering showers possible through the overnight hours, but by wake up time Saturday morning, this is 7 a.m. You can see skies are already expected to clear for the most part, and it will be windy out there as well. In terms of our severe weather chance, you can see that that level three 
out of five risk extends pretty much along the entire I-35 corridor here in the Lone Star State for those storms expected this evening. That also does include the vast majority of our area here in South Central Texas. So KSAT Weather Authority app, a great resource to have later on. Of course, we will go live on the app, get you the coverage that you need, and we'll monitor those storms coming through. Biggest things we will need to keep eyes on with those strong to severe storms, some large hail, as well as some damaging wind gusts. And of course, the lightning for those trying to go outside as well. Now, I mentioned the winds. By tomorrow morning, winds out of the north upwards of about 35 to even 40 miles per hour. So if you have any tents outside, loose lawn items, fiesta decorations, things of that nature, bring them inside tonight and probably secure them throughout the first half of the day because it is going to be very windy out there. Into flambeau time tomorrow evening, those breezy conditions are going to start to calm down. Still some 20 to 25 mile per hour wind gusts possible by the flambeau start time. Beautiful though. Other than that, low humidity, clear skies, temperatures falling into the 60s, potentially even upper 50s by the time the parade ends. So you might want the long sleeve out there. And then as we head into Sunday, a chilly start around 51 for the low, beautiful high near 84. And then we'll monitor for the humidity to return next week with temperatures climbing into the 80s. We're going to take a step aside. We'll be right back after the break. A Virginia woman who adopted a 40 pound cat named Patches is dieting in solidarity with her cat. She's also putting them both on an exercise routine. How do you exercise a cat? Well, we're going to find out. CNN's Jeannie Most is going to show us. Oh, it's him. No wonder the cat got my tongue. Yes, this is Patches. The nearly 40 pound cat just got a new owner and together they're going on a weight loss program. Well, we're gonna do it together. <laughs> Although the vet pointed out to me that I don't need to lose 50% of my body weight, he does. Patches was surrendered by his previous owner to Richmond, Virginia Animal Care and Control, the biggest cat the shelter ever encountered. They put him up for adoption, describing his body as gloriously gluttonous. Kay Ford won the right to take Patches home. It took two to carry his cage after writing that she wanted to go on the weight loss journey with him. Is he heavy on your lap? The blood circulation hasn't been cut off yet. He's actually kind of comfy. Wrote one fan on Patches' Facebook page, I desperately want to put my face in his belly. Others have created memes like the Meow Nalisa after the first week. Oh, thank you. Kay and Patches had bonded. So what if he can't fit through the door to the cat bed? He will eventually. It's okay, honey. I'm not laughing at you. The first stop in Operation Lose Weight was a trip to the vet. Patches is already slimming down. 38.8? Okay. That's awesome. Tests indicate there's nothing wrong that diet and exercise won't fix. The cat weighs five times more than Kay's Yorkshire Terrier. When it comes to weight loss goals, let's say a year from now, someone says to you, what's new, Pussycat? What do you hope to be able to say? I love that. <laughs> what's new, Pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. For Patches. A 20 pound weight loss. And I would certainly like to say the same. Which would make her a copycat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Funny, Kate said the same thing the first moment she laid eyes on Patches. Whoa. Ginny Most, CNN, <laughs> New York. I still haven't seen him exercise. No, well, she was pulling him in the cart. Why didn't you make him she walk? She was exercising. Yeah, the cat got a ride. I mean, get the cat out of the cart, walking around. Perfect story to lead into Mike and Fiona, I guess. Oh, and yeah. Jen. And Jen. <laughs> because look at what she's all about. <laughs> it is our post Bella Flower show, and this is going to be like something you have never seen before. Our producer has planned some games for us that we're a little bit leery yeah, about playing. We so. don't even know what we're going to play yet, so <laughs> you'll find out when we do. It's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we also have some helpers with us, too. We have teammates, too. Yeah, Please time, welcome guys. Araceli Yay! and Patalia. Yay! So 
We are a team, you two are a team. That's right, That's we are. Right. Jen is running the show. Yes, yes. Are you all ready for the competition? We're stretching, yes, we're good to go. I'm sorry, I'm I didn't mean to hit you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Any of the games that you're a little bit afraid of? No. Nothing no. scares him. No. Nothing scares him. I don't know, he looks a little frightened if you ask me. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Do you have your team names ready to go, guys? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I think so. okay. And, oh, you brought a drink for us. Oh, uh, no, this is part of the game. You can't have this yet. Oh. Inspiration. Oh, okay. It's your inspiration. Okay. Oh. Yes. Okay? That's all I'm going to give okay. you. Are you all ready to see a lot of great games? Hey, big round of applause for the Sabres out here, buddy. Woo! It is SA Live's Battle of Flowers Parade after party again. Stay tuned. <laughs>